Hey there. Today I'm going to show you how to set up the Perea Outdoor Products Arches two-person tent with a couple modifications I made to make it even easier and to get a perfect pitch every time. So like many backpackers out there, I was recently in search for a new tent that is lightweight and I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So that search led me to Perea Outdoor Products and their Arches tent. Uh, it's modeled after a Lanshan uh, type tent, which is a very popular design. And their versions come in a one person and a two person. The two person at the time was about $150. Uh, which is really good value for a tent, a uh, two person tent, which comes in just under three and a half pounds with everything included, includes a ground sheet. And one of the really nice things about this design of tent is really just the versatility. So there's several different pitch options. You can pitch it as just a mesh breeze tent if you know it's not gonna be raining. Uh, you can also uh, have an ultralight setup with just the ground sheet and the rain fly as well. Now, just as a disclaimer, uh, I am, I'm in no way affiliated with Puri Outdoor Products, nor have ever communicated with them. Uh, literally just bought the tent and checked it out and found several different uh, changes that I'd like to make uh, and I did to make the, the setup much easier. So those are what I'm going to walk through. Now the first step in the process is to install the ground sheet, which was one of the first areas where I had a big question mark because the little Dyneema cordage loops on the corners of the ground sheet were just way too short to actually uh, reach the tent stakes where they would need to be to secure the tent body and the rain fly. So the first thing I did was to put some longer loops of Dyneema. Uh, after I tied it, it was about six to eight inches in length uh, so that it could be held nice and secure and I could pull the, the stakes out to keep the ground sheet nice and centered and taut. Now in the end of each of those loops, I tied a knot and added another uh, length of Dyneema between each side. Um, I only did it on uh, the short sides and that way I would have a way to just really positively locate each of the four corners uh, by pulling them straight out. So there's about a 45 degree angle, but then that line, I just pull that line taut so that I can be sure uh, to get the placement of those stakes right every time without having to fiddle with it when it came to installing the rain fly. I knew they'd be in the right spot every time. So here's a picture of the ground sheet now with all four stakes installed. And you can see the lines of Dyneema on the two short sides left and right uh, are pulled nice and taut and everything is secured. So now you're ready to install the tent body. Another modification I made was to remove the Dyneema loops on each corner of the tent body and add in some shock cord loops, about four inches long uh, once tied. And that really helps to keep it nice and centered over that ground sheet and sort of just moves independently, which keeps it evenly taut and a nice even floor on it and keeps those uh, walls of the floor up nice and high to keep rain out. Now we're ready for the rainfly setup. So in true fashion, I made some changes here as well. I noticed that the line lock corners on this didn't seem to be a really good combination with the thin cordage uh, of Dyneema. Uh, the holes in the connector just seemed much larger than the cordage and I could get it to hold and get pretty taut, but Noticed on several occasions that once I had it taut with some wind, they would easily just break loose and come loose. Uh, and they'd be really frustrating when you're inside your tent. So I swapped out the cordage with some Spectra Glide line I got off of uh, from Hammock Gear. Uh, just a really lightweight, very durable cordage and cheap. Uh, but the size of it uh, fit through the holes and it's a nice snug fit. Now, I made it essentially just the same length as the Dyneema cord uh, with a little loop in one end. And as you pass it through uh, the line lock connector, 
uh, I added one stop knot on the back side just to keep it from slipping through uh, once you open that up to loosen it up. And the last modification I made to the Rainfly was to remove the Dyneema line and the little tensioners from the vestibule uh, connections and put some small loops of shock cord there as well so that I could hold the vestibule down to the ground stake uh, with two pieces of shock cord so that it could be easily removed and so that if I zipped up one side to leave it open, uh, it doesn't lose tension. The shock cord helps hold uh, the remaining side to that stake, uh, keep it nice and taut. Whereas with the uh, cordage, uh, you would lose tension and have to tighten and retighten if you want to keep everything nice and tight. So now back to securing the Rainfly. Basically just take those new loops of Spectre Glide line in each corner and secure them around the tent. Uh, but definitely leave plenty of slack to get everything else situated before you cinch down. Now it's time to get your trekking poles in position. I like putting mine on the tallest setting, which is 135 centimeters. I like the extra room in the tent and it helps with ventilation up under the Rainfly. Getting them in position is probably the hardest part, but I just shoot for the loop that's on the inside and they pretty much stay in place once everything is tightened down. I like to leave the mud cups on my trekking poles and the pointy end out so that I can go through the shock cord loop on the side and push them down into the ground without pulling too tight. From there you can take the shock cord loops on the vestibule and secure them to a ground stake. Here's a shot of me doing the same thing on the opposite side, just so you can get another angle. Now once you get both sides secured down, it's time to go around to each of the corners and just tighten up on those line lock tensioners. Not too tight, but tight enough to start to get the side walls of that rainfly nice and even. You should be able to get rid of most of the slack and the ripples at this point. So another note about my tent is that the main tie-out cord, which is black, that came with the tent actually wasn't long enough to go from this top loop all the way down to the ground stick at the vestibule. So I had to add my own Dyneema cordage there as well. And I made it a little extra long so that I could ratchet it all the way up to the top and use the same stake as the vestibule was already secured to, to keep it nice and close and out of the way but with plenty of cordage so that if I wanted to pull those out further and get a little more tension on those uh, for support, I could do that as well. And so the last step is to go down one more time and just give each of those corners a nice tug until you get all the ripples out of the rain fly and you have a nice taut pitch to your tent. And for the last step in our tent setup, it's time to pull out the side guy outs to give a little more room inside. Uh, you can use the second set of trekking poles. It is a two person tent, so give them a job. And tie just a little uh, hitch with a loop in it on the side. And I wrap that around the pole. A stick could work too. Uh, trekking pole works really nice. And that way you can add a little bit of length to pull kind of up and out and then bring that line down to another stake in the ground to hold it secure. You could also tie up and just use that line straight to a nearby tree or sapling if you want to do that. But then you can see it pulls out that rainfly just a little more to give you some extra room inside. Hey, another quick tip uh, to get some more room on the inside is you can actually take the hook and loop from the tent body and secure it to the one from the rainfly just to pull out that tent body a little further to give you extra room, especially if you're laying side by side with another person in the tent. 
Now, just to show you how much room there is in this tent, I have my Perea Recharge XL, four inch thick pad, extra long for me, and a Trekology pillow. I'm six foot five, and you can see I'm sitting all the way up and I can lay all the way down without hitting the tent. And I've got a good five or six inches on the head uh, and behind the head as well. And some room for my feet to play. And that's all there is to it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe it's helped you out in setting up your tent. Uh, if you like these changes or have other ideas yourself, feel free to leave those ideas and feedback in the comments section. Again, I'm very impressed overall with this tent, with the versatility, the lightweight, especially if you're splitting up between two people, and the variety of pitch options. And honestly, it's really roomy inside and nice to have both sides of access to get in and out. So try one out for yourself if you're looking for a lightweight, low budget tent. And uh, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.